I was really interested in tinkering with stuff. I always had hands-on stuff, and when I was in second grade, I actually entered this Invent America competition. I was never into all the chemistry demonstrations of things exploding. I mean, that didn't really pique my interest. I guess I've always been interested in science, especially mathematics. Well, I always like science because I like the kind of critical thinking it inspires. We all are curious and, and, and we all want to learn about the world around us. And that's what I really like about science. It was basically just an elementary school science project. Uh, that, that was it. That was all it took. I fell in love with science when I realized how many questions there are that still need to be answered. When I was in elementary school, a teacher told me to read Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time. When I was six years old, I played a lot of computer games, and my parents actually suggested that it was possible to make my own computer games. I fell in love with science really early on. Volcanoes that erupted, or, you know, just simple things. Science, I think science is beautiful, and even though it's science, it's also an art. What math really is on the theoretical level is it's not just playing with numbers and doing cool tricks. It's an art in itself. I love seeing problems and working on them, and I love the moment when I figure out how to solve them. I think I'm one of those people who always likes being on the edge of something and science provides that really, really well. It takes creativity to be like an artist, but it also takes creativity to come up with like novel solutions to math problems. And that's rewarding also. The mission of Society for Science and the Public is to advance the public engagement in science. These students really exemplify the value of pursuing something in order to reveal knowledge that nobody else in the world has revealed, and that's extremely powerful. That's what science is about. For at least a brief moment, you're the only person in the world who knows what you know about something. When you ask this question, you do the research, you're the only one who knows this for one brief moment. And then you get to share it, and then you're part of the scientific community. You, you just get it a little bit tighter, and then we'll see. Okay, we find a mirror. Yeah, ben should take a bow. <laughs> science wouldn't exist if people didn't have hope, or if people didn't dream. Every time I take a science class, I get more and more excited about science. Being here at the Intel Science Talent Search is very intense. I've been able to better not only understand science, but become very passionate about it. This entire process, it's changed the way that I think and the way that I operate, and it's, it's changed my entire life path. It's so rare to walk into a room and someone asks you, like, oh, what did you do? Like, what, what's your passion? What's your research? And then you pull out your report and you're like, oh, I did this and this, and they understand. I mean, it's really cool. It opened up a new world, kind of, for me. Because normally I'm not very social, but when I'm around these like-minded students, then I really open up. It's really inspiring to know that these are people who are not only very passionate about the projects that they do, but I can talk about anything scientific with them. Science, it's always a continuous journey to no destined goal, but just to advance the field. The euphoria that comes with discovering something new and something just like absolutely elegant and brilliant. This is just this amazing, amazing process. You gotta be passionate about what you do if you choose to do it. And I can make advances in science to help people. And it's just a completely different way of thinking about the contribution I can make to the world. There are topics that have been studied for hundreds of years and we're still finding new things about them. There's something out there for everybody to find.